It is a privilege today to be joined on the summit by Kobe Manzo from Division One Rejects. Kobe, been watching your stuff for quite a while. You're just up there doing lots of work. Tell me really quickly as we get started, what's the hot topic that you're covering? What are some things that are fresh on your mind? Well, you know, it's the off season, and whether it's social media or, or our show, it's Sometimes there are slow weeks. Uh, you and I both know that. But right now, I mean, transfer portal is obviously a big one. There's still uh, just a month ago over 1,000 players still unsigned. As far as that's just NCAA numbers, right? You talk about NAIA, that's a whole different picture. But right now, a lot of the big news is just where are these big names going, right? We got a lot of guys right now. We're going through this process where all the shouldn't say all, but a lot of the best players from these D2 NAIA D3 teams are being poached and picked up by these uh, smaller or sometimes even these power four in this new day and age of college football <laughs> D1. So for me, that's probably the biggest thing right now. The other thing, we've seen some interesting hires in the last couple of weeks, but uh, it's the off season and uh, a lot of just speculation right now, which I try. You'll notice at, at D1 Rejects, we're the aggregator of everything. I will never put out a top 25 ranking. I will never do any of that because guess what? There are way too many football teams to cover and I don't think anyone knows how to do it. Uh, you know what? I, I think that we agree about a lot of things. Just getting to visit with you a little bit before we come on the air and, and hear you talk right now. I, I, I hold some of those same thoughts. Kobe, uh, Division One Rejects, where do you get that name? So tell us a little bit about what you do and, and your channel in particular. How did, how did you come up with that? You know, you're a Division II athlete or a former Division II football player. Yes, so tell us a little bit about what you've done and, and how you came across this. Yes, sir. Play football up at uh, Northern Michigan up here. I still uh, I work up here in our uh, athletic department, but uh, it was either D1 Rejects or D2 Dorm Talk in short because it started in the college dorm in 2020. I figure we would grow out of D2 Dorm Talk way too quick. So D1 Rejects was there to stay. The thing about D1 Rejects that is great is that whether you hate the name or you love it, you are going to click on it. And then once we get you to see our content, I think most people understand that we're all about the small school guys. So um, there was definitely some some hesitation from people that watched the, or maybe just heard the name off the rip. But uh, I think we're past that now with the, with the majority of people who tune in. I, th I definitely think that, that you built the brand up to the point where m many of the people who are looking for the content that you provide understand what the name means and, and what goes on behind that and what you do provide. Now, speaking of that, you were talking about being up there at Northern Michigan. You graduated in May. Congratulations. But Thank you're you. going to be continuing your time there in a little bit of a, of a different facet, if you will. Talk about what you're doing now. Yes, sir. So the working title is digital media manager for Northern Michigan Athletics, a new position up here. And it's one that, you know, when I started to get into that job search, looking around the college landscape, D1s have had it for a long time. Division two and smaller schools, Division two in particular, um, they're starting to catch up and they're starting to do it very quickly. And I interviewed in a couple of different spots that the title may change, creative services director, content coordinator, whatever the title is. These schools are recognizing that from an athletic standpoint, you need an in-house person to market and to push out your brand uh, to all these different platforms. And that's going to be the way you land these recruits in, in a different day and age. And so Northern, uh, thankfully, is starting to understand that as well. And I think, you know, moving into the fall, we're going to have a team, as I mentioned before we started going here, 15 student interns underneath me, whether that's photo, video, graphic design, social media, providing one, a great platform and everything for our northern athletes for our athletes to utilize myself and their capabilities to grow their personal brands but then also you talk about providing opportunities for those 15 people who otherwise would have never probably had a, a career uh in sports or at least started that career at northern because we don't have uh, too many of those opportunities so i'm so excited we got a brand new studio uh ready to go up here and we're going to make a big impact on our wildcat athletic teams man I, and I've seen your work, by the way, online, on Instagram, some different places like that. And I, I would say right here, you do fantastic work. It really is good. And, and with, with that, though, in mind, let me ask you, too, is that knowing what you do, you do quality work. Obviously, you get the job because of the work that you do. But how big is it for you to be able to, to do something at the school in which you just graduated you probably know a whole lot about? Oh, it's, I think the biggest thing for me is relationships, right? And that was the thing, the sticking point for me with Northern. Um, my family's also up here. That was obviously a big part of the decision, but uh, it's the relationships, right? I, I've been here for four years. I've had a chance to cultivate some great relationships with the existing coachings and uh, coaching staffs that are here. And so not to say I didn't want to go and meet uh, different coaches at different spots, because there are a ton of fantastic ones out there across all levels and, and different sports, but I've gotten to know the ones here pretty well. And I, I really come to like a lot of them. That was the thing for me that, you know, their support has been fantastic. And I think 
with those relationships moving forward, I now have as a you know a professional, as an in-house person in our athletic department now, have a great idea of how to represent these teams and how to put out uh, the different content that, that they want to see on these platforms and, and to best assist them. Because at the end of the day, that's the job, is, is helping them get the best recruits and uh, putting people in the seats at their games and trying to help win games. That's, that's all it is in, in, in any sport, right? We're visiting now with Cubby Manzo here on Midwest Sportsnet, where we also cover small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. Cubby, I heard the question brought up on your channel one time that people might be asking, because you cover a lot of football, obviously a, a football player, you know a lot about the sport and, and decorated at the high school level and playing in college as well. Uh, fantastic at what you do. You know the sport. Are you going to take that maybe beyond football with Division One rejects and, and ever cover some of the other sports as well? The short answer is I would love to. I would absolutely love to. Um, whether it's, you know, baseball and basketball feels like would be the two that we would branch out to uh, the quickest. But um, we don't currently have any plans of that right now. I'm still, for me, it's, um, I guess the way I look at it is in small school football, you can count the number of uh, media outlets that do consistent work uh, probably on both my hands right here, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, the way I see it, I want to be the absolute best at what I do before I end up starting to push out uh, other products or start spreading myself too thin. And I think the biggest thing for me is uh, it goes back to not doing any preseason top 25 rankings or breaking down positions. or I, I don't know. I'm going to speak on the stuff that I do know, that small school football, and it's about the stories of the players. So I certainly would say don't be surprised if we try and rope in some basketball here this coming winter or baseball even in the coming spring. Those would be two I would like to certainly address. But but that's going to come with getting more help, right? It's going to come with uh, – you watch any of our shows, you know that I bring in people that know what they're talking about, and I refer to them always. So whether that's news happening at a certain school, whether that's someone coming in, like my great friends Jimmy Martin and Matt Schwarzler, who are very familiar with the D3 and NAI level, respectively bringing them on the show to confer with them uh that's something i'm always going to lean on so uh, if there are people out there and we probably will uh we'll go out and search for those people that want to come on and help me with my knowledge of, of small school whether it be baseball basketball or some other kind of uh sport it'd be fantastic but to more directly answer your question probably not yet all right but it's in the back pocket just in case it is it, it's definitely right. a goal all right that's fine Let, let's talk some football then Division sure. two football, the reigning national champions, the Harding Bisons, rushed for more than 6,000 yards last season, an incredible run. And getting to have the opportunity to, to work with the Great American Conference, I generally get a chance to see Harding at least once a year. And I have to mm -hmm. tell you from that perspective, they are the real deal. And there, there's there's no doubt about what they're going to do, game in and game out. That's the, the funny thing about it too, Kobe, is you know what's coming, and still it's it's a challenge for defenses to stop. What do you think? Is this is this something? Can they repeat? Can they come back and do it again in 2024? Well, the short answer is yes, they they absolutely can because of that point that you just made. Every team in the country knew exactly what was coming from them last year. Guess how many of them stopped it? At least stopped it effectively. There were teams that uh, maybe stopped it for three quarters, maybe stopped it for a half. Nobody stopped it for four quarters, and nobody could shut them down through the entire duration of the game. Not even at the national stage. You look at a team like mine, thought that one was going to be an offensive uh, fire fire. I don't know, some type of storm, but that defense is a part that maybe hasn't even been talked about because we talk about the flex bone right. so specifically. And it's such an awesome, fun, flashy thing, uh, even though it is the furthest thing from flashy in the terms of an offensive playbook. The short answer is yes, they absolutely can. And talking with uh, with Big West, we had on the show not too far back, you know, getting to learn not so much what is the X's and O's of that Harding offense and defense, but the culture over there and what those guys have built that's something that's not going anywhere. And so for me, having that success only confirms the fact that these guys are, are going to be a major threat. Now, with that being said, the biggest thing for me, the biggest challenge for them, yeah, obviously you're going to have a couple squads you're going to have to get over in the GAC. That's that's no question, but it's Super Region 3 as a whole. And, yeah. and for Division 2, there has been some, you know, some legislation potentially being pushed about changing the way we do Super Regions and the playoffs. And I've expressed my distaste, to say politely, the way in which the Division II playoffs have operated uh, quite a few times on our show. But as it stands, Super Region 3 is a gauntlet. And so if you're Harding, not to say you can snooze through that regular season play, because they absolutely cannot and they will not. But if what team's going to do it, they certainly can, but they might have the hardest road to do it in uh, 2024. You, know, you mentioned the the potential legislation too, and and when I was younger, way back when, um, probably before you were born, definitely before you were born, 
<laughs> but I, I, I was a, a big fan, very big fan of regionalization, having been a part of not only Super Region 3 in coverage, but the Central Region in other sports. Uh, there are just so many teams so many good quality teams and it's it's tough to leave one out when the playoffs come around i know we can talk about that for a while more but yeah. I, I i agree with you on that standpoint more opportunities for for this region well i'd like to ask another repeat question you've got your harlan hill trophy winner from the university of central missouri coming back zach zabrowski threw for more than five thousand yards one of only well you talk about just more than than one hand that you're using of players on all levels who've thrown for more than 60 touchdown passes in a season. He's going to be back for the Mules as well. The potential for him repeating or or being up there near the top again. Absolutely. And again, there will never be a person that has a lock for that award, right? And the player is is so important because Zach is a phenomenal player. Uh, you know, the guys you look back at the people who have won it in the past, Matoka, just phenomenal player. You go down that list. The potentially the bigger thing than how important the player is for that award is all system, right? It's all system. And, and that award is so statistic based in that a, a player can have such a great impact on a team and still not win that award. So when a guy like Zach comes along and he can have the impact, but he can also have the statistics at that high of a level and you can have both those things. I, I don't think the award was even in question this year. Now, on the flip side of that, you've got some talented pieces uh, coming back from across the country. I know Sammy Edwards is one down at Valdosta that's uh, going to be on a lot of those preseason lists, and people will be watching him. We've had the pleasure of having both these guys on the show, actually. So I I've enjoyed talking with both of them. But to go back to the main point, it's system, system, system. That offense down there for the Mules is incredibly fast. They're not afraid to take a lot of shots. And uh, he does lose a big-time weapon in the outside, Arkell Smith, who uh, I believe did sign a deal with the Edmonton Elks up in the CFL. Um, but – you look at a lot of those other offensive pieces that are coming back and a defense that I think is only going to get better. That helps having a, a stout side of the other side of the ball. MIAA is no joke. We know that, but they're going to be poised again, right there. You talk right back to super region three, right? It's right back there. But for me, it all comes down to their system. And, that, and the answer is, is yes. He's got a great shot to do it again because of the system he's in. And uh, let's not forget his dad's a quarterback coach at Kansas. Uh, the dude knows a thing or two. His son knows a thing or three. Uh, they're going to be in good shape this year. All right. I was I was thinking too. By the way, you I and I want to look back. I'm trying to recall. I think that Harding UCM game in the playoffs may have been uh, the tightest one Harding was in. If I remember, I think that one actually came down to a single point too. So it was it was the blocked the blocked uh, extra point yeah. field goal, and then and then you go the next week in Grand Valley, and it was like just a one point game yeah. as well. So it was it was or not one point one score game. It was absurd. Well, let's let's go from D two to NAI really quickly, and and since we we have Division one in your channel's name, let's throw out Division one team really quickly: the Nebraska Cornhuskers, and they're going to benefit or have po the potential to benefit from an NAIA player, Jalen Gramstad, who led the Northwestern Red Raiders to back-to-back -back championship game appearances, won one, lost one, the NAIA player of the year, and he's going to take his chance and move on down the road from Orange City over to Lincoln and see what he can do on the Division I level. What do you think? You know, I won't lie, this surprised me a lot. This surprised me a lot. You know, who it also surprised was probably the Jamestown uh, guys who were at that camp and saw Gramstad pull up and probably yeah. did a double take. And I would assume made a couple phone calls very quickly, but uh, for the guys in that building, they're getting a dog. Like this dude is, he, he checks every box as far as a competitor and every kind of intangible you could possibly have. And I've never had the chance to see him in person. All I can is pull up is the tape and, the, and some of those things. And from what I've seen, the dude can play. Now the most, the most obvious knock is his size. The dude isn't very large. The reason why he's playing at the NAIA level in the first place, and he tore it up. So for him, it's obviously a prove it thing. Hey, there's going to be talking heads like myself that say he, there's, there's going to be a great chance he can, he's going to struggle at this next level, whatever. Go out, prove me, prove everybody wrong. The thing that works in his favor is I do believe he has a redshirt year available to him. So say he comes in this fall, they don't believe he's ready for that job immediately. They redshirt him, and you get a year under your belt operating at that level, at a Division One level in that program, that facility. Maybe you come back the next year and are more of an impact player. The other thing that uh, really had a lot of question marks for me was Dylan, is it Raiola, I believe is, I say his last name, but that big, uh, really highly touted recruit that Big Red just pulled in at the quarterback spot. All the news, all the coverage has been on this guy. And so now, you know, not to say that Gramstad can't come in and compete with this kid, but from a Nebraska standpoint, we're talking NIL, we're talking, how did you get this kid on campus? You've mm -hmm. got quite a bit of, uh, well, funds invested in this guy and this Raiola guy. 
you're probably going to want to see that pan out because there's a lot of people that are really excited about this move. So who knows how much that will play into it uh, with Rule and Company over there. And uh, you never know. You really never know. I am, however, excited just to see him uh, go through whether it's fall camp. And I, I'm, I'm very curious to see how much we hear about this this perceived quarterback competition, because from my perspective, it certainly will be a competition. You got a guy coming in, a uh, young kid, as, as highly touted as you are. He hasn't played in two national championship games. So Graham said coming into this, I'm very curious to see how this Nebraska coverage and the media people over there, uh, how closely they cover this quarterback competition, and how much they'll, we'll see from him. It should be fun to watch. And, and definitely from the perspective of, of folks who cover small college sports, we're going to be definitely looking at the uh, Division One level a little bit more maybe just to, to follow him along and, and be a part of that. I feel like as a, as a fan, not as, just as Division One growing up, but in, in the small college coverage over the years now, a little bit invested in him and watching him play, especially for the last couple of years when he really took over midway through the season a couple of years ago. His only loss as the starting quarterback – was in the national championship game this past year. So he's he's had quite a career at Northwestern. I'm, I'm looking forward to watching that one as well. Kobe, really quickly, tell us where we can find you. You're not just on YouTube, although you are right now, and, and Division One Rejects on YouTube as well, but you have a lot of other social media. And again, quality work that you put out there. Where, where do the folks find you? First of all, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Yeah, YouTube's the biggest one for us. Put out a lot of content out there, uh, clipping everything and, and making sure we get all the different storylines out for you guys. But Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you're listening to podcasts, Instagram and Twitter, a lot of great social content going out there. Uh, be on the lookout. About to get these hopefully posted. We had a tr- chance to go down to Alma College and do a facility tour uh, with the coaching staff down there. So hoping to have those out within the next uh, week or two. So those will be up on the YouTube and uh, some big stuff coming down the pipeline. Hopefully a lot more game day shows this fall from the D1R crew. All right. Well, we're going to follow you as well, and I really appreciate you taking some time with us today here on Midwest Sportsnet. Kobe Manzo from Division One Rejects, definitely not rejected on our program here. As a matter of fact, welcome in. So we appreciate you stopping by and taking some time with us today. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you, man.